We're doing well now, Heather. We, you know, we 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 touched base yesterday about uh, what we'd be talking about today, and we presumed it would be a look back on the year and a look forward because much of the the major, I guess, legislation of uh, this year had been sort of finished, and uh, Donald Trump stepped into the fray and blew everything up and apparently surprised a lot of his own advisors. <laughs> apparently. Um, he's really mad at Mitch McConnell. <laughs> I mean, he is so <laughs> mad at Mitch McConnell because that's, in my view, that's what this is really all about. I mean, I think you know, Trump could have been in, he, he has wanted to give a bunch of money away as part of, you know, some kind of a relief slash stimulus from the beginning, but he never bothered to participate in any way. I mean, he's been so obsessed with his own reelection and with this ridiculous post-election, you know, dispute and all of that, that he didn't bother to really involve himself in that. And he could have, he, and had he pressed it, and all he had to do was unleash his MAGA cult, right? And to call up every, all of their senators and say, we demand this $2,000, we follow, you know, Trump, do what he says. And it pro he probably could have gotten them to do it. He just didn't bother. But and I don't think he cares even now. I don't, you know, he says that, but I don't think he cares. But the reason that he's so upset is because Mitch McConnell has told the senators, first of all, he acknowledged the, the Biden um, election, you know, because he accepted reality. And he also told his senators not to participate in this little pageant they're planning for, for January 6th, where they want to object to the uh, electoral, um, you know, to the, to the certification of the electoral college vote. And he wants that, he wants the senators to object to it and vote against it. And, you know, this is a ridiculous thing. I mean, it's not gonna happen. But because he heard, and this was reported, that Mitch McConnell told the, his people, please don't vote for this because it means, and this was the reasoning, it means that you'll have to, to vote against Donald Trump because you know we're not going to actually do this. So that's putting our guys in a terrible position where there's going to be a vote against Donald Trump is going to hurt us in 2022. That was Mitch McConnell's convoluted rationale for not wanting to do this. And Trump is mad at him for that. And he act, he went after John Thune, the deputy, um, you know, the what is this, the other majority leader, the deputy majority leader, whatever it is, um, who said, you know, from South Dakota, who said, look, you know, it's not going to happen. So why put everybody through this? And so Trump went after McConnell. On Monday night, he sent around a graph showing that somehow or another McConnell uh, re-election was due to Donald Trump's tweets and <laughs> endorsements and some robocall that he did. And then last night, uh, he put out, you know, he sent out the, a tweet that said, you know, McConnell blew it and that John Thune is a rhino and he's going to primary him in 2022. And so he is mad. And what that did is it's exactly as you say, it's a tremendous gift to Nancy Pelosi and to Pelosi and Schumer's credit, yep. instead of dilly dallying as they usually do or following the Amy Klobuchar, um, some of the other sort of centrist types I've noticed in pundit, you know, in the punditocracy going on and on about how well we really can't this is the process and we made a deal and blah 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 Pelosi and Schumer came out immediately as did AOC and a bunch of others and said yeah we're there good we're following don't follow the leader you know do this thing and I was actually kind of proud of them for for taking yes for an answer well well because it's really just a no lose situation in this sense right because either they uh call Trump's bluff and delay the stimulus which helps in the Georgia runoffs, or they do this unanimous uh, consent vote. It fails because obviously at least one Republican in both the Senate and the House is going to object to it. And then the part that I worry about is, will Pelosi take this up as a standalone bill after the unanimous consent to, uh, fails, which, which I, I wouldn't put it past her. It seems like a no brainer, but I wouldn't put it past her to just do this theater part and then not well, that is that is the real question. And we should just, you know, just to, to back up a little bit, because um, they Schumer and Pelosi, you're right, just came out immediately. In fact, Schumer, I think, um, retweeted AOC's bill that she has with Rashida Tlaib. Um, and I think they actually called for 
two thousand and twenty dollars just <laughs> a way to say goodbye to twenty twenty. Uh, but nevertheless, Schumer was right on top of that, and this does. There is no. I mean, the delay is. It seems to me there is no delay. I mean, it's a question of whether or not Donald Trump signs this bill. And he may not sign it. He may not sign it at this point. Or he could just pocket veto it by just letting it expire, uh, which is probably more likely. And like Emma says, there's, uh, you know, uh, Pelosi came out and said, we're going to take this unanimous consent, which is very much, this is also how they did the CARES Act. This is where you can vote from a distance and as long as there's no one who says no, and that's it. But there's obviously an expectation that somebody's going to say no. And then the real question becomes, does Nancy Pelosi have, I don't even know how to describe this, the inclination, I mean, I want to say, I want to say bravery, but that seems to be too strong of a word for what you need to call people back during the Christmas break and make them take a vote and make the Republicans vote against this bill, then send it to the Senate and make Mitch McConnell either not bring it up. I mean, this seems to be a, a genuine moment where Nancy Pelosi cannot escape because there's a broader awareness. Like, you know, I feel like 15 years ago, uh, 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 Heather, that they could have gotten away with the UC, with the unanimous consent. There was no Twitter. There was no social media. People wouldn't talk about it. They wouldn't know about it. But today, because people jumped on this very quickly, Adam Gentleson, who was a former uh, chief of staff in Harry Reid's office, I believe it was, uh, mm -hmm. and David Dayen and others, there's an awareness now of this type of thing. Absolutely. And, and there was, you know, from the moment that it happened, there was a ton of analysis that was going out on Twitter, and I assume Facebook as well, and other social media, that was discussing the intricacies of this. And, the, and it really, it, it's fairly complicated, the, the way that this could unfold in a number of ways that could be good or bad. A pocket veto, if it sits there too long, the Congress expires, you got to go back and redo the whole thing. You've got, you know, there are a lot of things that, that could happen there. But you're absolutely right. This is a moment where, you know, I mean, who cares if Donald Trump gets credit for this thing? I, he's gone. I mean, that's not going to change. Now, Trump may feel like somehow or another this will give him, you know, the what he needs politically to overturn the election. But it's not true. I mean, he can think that. Or but we all know, let him have credit for it. Fine. You know, hey, Trump, goodbye. That was an excellent parting gift. We really appreciate it. The American people, thank you for your for your service. You yeah. know? Just so add what Emma, hurts her. Emma was implying that, that he also may see this as being valuable. Who knows if he's going to run in 2024, but there is value to him sure. to pretend that he is. And like this is, you know, this is that scene from like, you know, uh, Little Italy in New York where, you know, the 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 mob boss would go out and throw around a hundred dollar bills right. Christmas. He gets to do that. It's definitely going to help him down the road, but not necessarily with with Democratic voters. I mean, people I don't think like people are going to walk away from this and because the Democrats jumped on it. But uh, right, so so walk us through this. He pocket vetoes it. The whole bill, this is the omnibus, and this is, you know, the government shuts down. That's going to put pressure on McConnell to bring that up, even though the, the COVID stuff was a function of, of Georgia. Yeah. There's 11 days here, and the Democrats have been so quick on this. They have to, she has to call a vote. I mean, this is literally the Democrats get to play Santa Claus and basically daring Mitch McConnell to be Scrooge or, uh, you know, uh, what's the, Grinch. the Grinch or whomever it is. There you go. Well, let me ask you, why can't they do that today? I mean, why can't she just go, let's, you know, I mean, they haven't left yet, have they? I nope. mean, they're still no, here. They could so, do. I mean, they have to be there to override the veto if for some reason he does it, right? So they're there. Why can't she just go, look, we're going to do this standalone bill. It's just going to sit here. We won't send it over unless we need to. But everybody, we're all, we're all on board. Get the vote done and have it there. And just say, you know, Trump. We're with you. We're ready. We're going to have this. If this is how we have to do it, this is how we have to do it. That would put tremendous pressure on McConnell and whoever, if they want to go in and amend this thing. Now, I don't know what the process is for amending the bill at this point. Do you? I mean, is it difficult? Could they 
I think the idea would be that, I mean, amending the bill would be di more difficult because then you'd have to have amendments come out of the House. They'd have to get passed or they'd yeah. come the Senate and they'd have to get passed by both houses and they would go back and forth. In this instance, you could just have a standalone bill and say to Trump, you know, we're giving you the standalone bill. Sign off on that one. Maybe he doesn't sign off on the omnibus. You get another bite at the apple there. Yeah. And you get but, that $2,000. That's, that's my fear is that this unanimous consent, she might wipe her hands of it once it's done because they want a bill going into next year and they fear, say, worst case scenario, the Georgia runoffs don't go their way. Then they're never going to get another stimulus package uh, with McConnell still holding on to the Senate. And clearly, Democratic le leadership has signaled that they want something done and they don't care as much about what is in it because Biden is worried about the economic fall fallout next year. I mean, that's what I think but a standalone bill, towards, though. The only reason why you wouldn't do a standalone bill at this point, and I don't but know why they couldn't bring it. Well, no, but the only reason why you wouldn't do it is because you don't want to come back for Christmas, that you want to allow people to get out the door. And so, like, you know, the bill has been written already. It might take longer to get the standalone bill, but we're only talking literally, I think, like a day. Um, uh, and that is really what it seems to come down to. There doesn't seem to be any type of procedural hurdles or whatnot. It doesn't interfere with the bill that's already been passed. Um, this is a real, like, I mean, this would be an incredible, I, I don't even, I, an incredible failure if Pelosi just decided 100%. it's too much to ask for lawmakers to stay home. Well, that's I mean, I, th that's the rationale. It's completely absurd. Not to mention the fact that how would this affect the Georgia race? I think it would be hugely positive. I agree. Because, you know, especially if, if Nancy's out there pushing it, Pelosi and Schumer, you've got the Democrats out there going, look, we're, we, you know, look, you know, we don't we don't love Donald Trump. But when it comes to doing things for the American people, we're the ones who are going to do it. And you could have Warnock and Ossoff. In fact, Ossoff came out. I didn't, Warnock probably did too. I just didn't see it, but came out immediately going, yes, I'm with the, I'm for the $2,000. This is, you know, this is something that Democrats can run on. And this is a clip uh, from uh, Tuesday night, I believe it was, last night. Ossoff doing that very thing on CNN. Let's play this clip. President Trump is, as ever, erratic and all over the place. But on this point tonight, he's right. $600 is a joke. They should send $2,000 checks to the American people right now because people are hurting. And David Perdue, my opponent, who opposed even the first round of $1,200 checks. Imagine that. Imagine a sitting U.S. senator who was profiting from the pandemic buying medical and vaccine stocks, opposed even the first single round of $1,200 checks, has obstructed direct relief for the last eight months, and now decided he wanted to cut it down to 600 bucks when people can barely feed their families through no fault of their own. Congress should pass $2,000 checks. They should have done it two months ago. Well, you know, you vote. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, John Ossoff is not going to be my favorite senator uh, in, in the Senate. But I don't know how you could do a better job uh, as a candidate than he just did in those 60 seconds. Oh, he's good at that stuff. I mean, I have to give him credit. He's very glib. He's very, you know, he's very, very um, articulate. And, and he often sort of is able to, he's very good at sort of wrapping everything up in his message, which is, of course, about Purdue being, a, you know, a corrupt you know, multimillionaire, which of course he is. And he, um, you know, he did that very skillfully, I thought. And he's right. Look, I mean, that is a message everybody knows. I mean, maybe they'll give Donald Trump credit for, you know, gee, he loves me and he's given me $2,000. And I just think that guy's terrific. Well, we'll deal with him down the road, you know, one step at a time. Right now, I think it's pretty clear that everybody understands that it's the Democrats. For however badly the Democrats have mess messaged all this, and we talked about this yep. earlier in the week, Sam, about how, what a waste it was of all those months of not of the Democrats not taking full advantage of the fact that they had passed the CARES bill, and you know talking about specifically what it was they were trying to do, and using that to contrast with the fact that the Republicans were stonewalling it all the way. I mean, this was a very useful thing. Even just as a messaging bill, it just wasn't messaged very well. And people, all people knew was that 
it had there's a bunch of money they didn't know what it was for they didn't know how it was specifically you know aimed at people and and this though is very clearly two thousand dollars everybody can understand that it's two thousand dollars per person i think which would be four thousand dollars for a couple and then another two thousand for each kid as far as it one thousand for a kid i can't remember oh no it's a lot of money you didn't go into the details of that Shopping. They'd end up doing, yeah, right, exactly. right, of course. But, but your point is, and but if you if you did it, what we previously done, it would be something yeah. like that. Exactly. I mean, I imagine. I, I mean, it. it you, you could get two thousand dollars for a head of the household, and if there's a couple, it's four thousand dollars. And any um, dependent child would be six hundred dollars. It would be good to extend this while you're at it, while you're there, to any dependent adult. Maybe you give two thousand dollars per, uh, you know, any adult in the household type of situation, um, but nevertheless, you're right. And and it's the Heroes Act that was the messaging bill that they passed over the summer, and that and that one was three point eight trillion dollars. Nobody can really mention what's in it. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but as a messaging bill, it fails because all we remember is three point eight trillion and the word heroes, as opposed to if they had just like. You could have had a messaging bill and be like, we're going to give $5,000 per person. Everybody will remember exactly what that is. But this scenario we have now, yeah. very similar to the scenario that could have existed prior to the election. It was $1.8 trillion on the table. I believe, I'm not sure, you know, we don't know the details of this, but they're, you know, they must have come up with that number in some fashion. There was certainly checks that were being cut to people of larger than 600, could have been 1,200 or 1,400, could have been 2,000. Nancy Pelosi did not take that opportunity prior to the election to do what she can do now.